Hello, political aficionados and casual viewers. Welcome to Spaghetti Politics, where we explore European politics and people in charge. Our 10 part series will showcase the most influential figures in Europe and people who are currently shaping the landscape of this continent. Today, we'll talk about Emmanuel Macron, the president of the French Republic. Wednesday, 5th of April, 2023. French President Emmanuel Macron and Ursula von der Leyen, the President of the European Commission, fly to China. The goal? Nothing crazy. Just get China to turn on Russia and help end the war. But von der Leyen and Macron have slightly different strategies to achieve that. Macron brings an army of business executives to do business with China, with China likes it, definitely. As a reward, the entire route from the airport to the French ambassador's residency is closed down. I mean, not very particularly pleasant for the locals in Beijing, but they can take it. On the other hand, von der Leyen goes to China with a stick. She warns China that Europe may have to de-risk itself. In other words, this means that Europe is ready to break up things with China if China does not commit to ending the war in Ukraine. That's because she has to represent all of the European Union. And as it turns out, not everyone in Europe is a big fan of China. Take Lithuania, for example. Their foreign minister, Gabrielis Landsbergis, still thought that von der Leyen was being weak on China. He insisted on breaking up with China first, before things got bad. Before getting on, on the flight, Macron definitely called America to assure Biden that he will go to China to cooperate. The groundwork for the meeting had been laid for months and Macron promised he would not say or do anything crazy. Well, it's Thursday and the two European leaders meet with Xi Jinping, the Chinese president. It is the main event of the trip, von der Leyen and Macron try to come in China to play a more constructive role on Ukraine. And the Europeans did not forget their roles. Both the stick and the carrot are put to play. But there is no success. Definitely no success. She sees he can just reuse old content, that is, calling in for peace talks and criticize nuclear threats being made easy. But it does not take long for Macron to spiral out of control. He starts making others feel very uncomfortable. He's fine with von der Leyen getting sidelined in their joint visit. He's more than happy to outshine Xi at the joint conference, speaking twice as long as him. But now it's Friday. Von der Leyen left Ambas and Macron is getting desperate. He panics. In his interview with Politico on the same day, he decides to publicly declare his love for China. Taiwan? Doesn't matter. America? Too arrogant. European strategic autonomy? Easy achievable. Well, China loved it. America hated and Europeans were confused. But wait, this is nothing new. Macron has said stuff like this before. It's just his first time saying that in China, the home of America's enemy. The timing was not great either, so let's look into Macron's big idea and whether it's worth pissing everyone off. Strategic autonomy from America is a centerpiece of Macron's foreign policy. After years of Trump openly questioning Amer Americans' role in Europe, Macron declared the organization to be brain dead in 2019. But he argued that America was to be blamed. Trump had already unilaterally pulled troops out of Syria just months before that. This allowed Turkey to sweep the area of allied Kurdish fighters and Europeans were caught off guard. So the problem was evident. America could no longer be trusted and now all Macron needed was to present an alternative to Americans for Europeans. And he was calling it the strategic autonomy. What's that, you may ask? 
basically Europeans being able to de defend themselves and taking military actions in the neighborhood, but without relying on American help for it. Sounds great, doesn't it? But there's a tiny problem. Half of Europeans do rely on American se for security, and they do not trust France to fill those shoes, even if America has Trump for a president. You see, Europe is divided when it comes to security. There's Group A, conveniently situated in Eastern Europe, sees threat coming from the East. There's Group B, sees that the threat coming from the South. And then there is France, which sees America as the main threat. Perhaps also European Council President Charles Michel, who we covered in the previous video. France at best understands countries worried about migration from the South, since France being in the South of Europe certainly does help. However, France fails to understand the Central Eastern European countries, since it's a bit far away from Russia. The existential threat felt by countries like the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, or Poland, and so on, is hard to grasp for France. There is a common ground still. Both sides agree that Europe should spend more money on defense themselves, but the, bra the part about breaking with America and distancing from America does not make sense if you have Russia as your neighbor. Macron still cannot explain why it will be beneficial for Eastern Europeans to distance themselves from America. And they also fail to explain how France would fill that void. You don't need to look further than the war in Ukraine to understand the worries of the Eastern European countries. To be fair, France has always had a soft spot for Russia. Back in 2014, when Russia was actively pursuing a land grab in Ukraine, Europe wanted at all costs to end the conflict there. For example, Germany and France tried their best to get Ukraine the worst deal possible in Minsk. Eight years later, and both France and Germany had new leaders, with marginally less willingness to make Russia happy, but Macron still wanted to give diplomacy a chance to save the day. This did not stop after the war already. Granted, France has given Ukraine military aid, however, Macron clearly prefers that he could solve the conflict by himself, even at the expense of the collective EU action. Macron clearly had had the chance to put his vision into action when Russia invaded Ukraine, yet he struggled to take leadership, perhaps because America was already calling the shots, and the most important part, NATO wasn't brain dead. It's hard to say what Macron's true vision for France are. Does he want to elevate Europe to the center of global politics, as a third pole against US and China, or does he want France alone to be a second tier power in global politics, capable of being a mediator for other great powers, or is he just against America? Well, one thing is clear, he does not like how things are right now, and he wants to shake them up. But after six years of trying, there's little progress. French people are still burning down cities. Attempts to build a European army with Germany has gone nowhere, and European countries do not trust him to guarantee peace in Europe. The only option left for Macron right now is to go solo. But, as we have seen, Putin did not care for his conflict mediation skills. Macron is totally not alone in his views on Russia, America or China, but his allies do not see him as a unifying leader they could get behind on. Love him or hate him, Macron certainly gets people talking. He is a Faustian figure claiming to want to reinvigorate Europe, but usually achieving the quite opposite. But what does that mean and what do you think? Let us know in the comments.